Today, I went shopping. Spring onions, radish, soy sauce, and bean curd. You see, my wife, she told me to make myself useful for a change and get the groceries. She wasn't always like that. She used to be sweet. Oh, now there's a nice couple. Ah, so young. A date at the shrine? In my day, I'd take a girl out to a nice fashionable cafe in the city. Oh my, they're so well-mannered. Kusakari. Huh? In Japan, there's a trend among young people today to visit power spots. A power spot? What is that? This is a Shinto shrine. Power spots are places where it's thought that natural powers dwell. It's said that such spots energize and reinvigorate those who visit. Especially popular are shrines throughout the country. I've always been fond of power spots. I visited famous shrines and local shrines as well. I can clear my mind, reset myself, so to speak. I think shrines have always had that kind of power. From ages past, the people of Japan have worshipped nature as deity. In places such as waterfalls or huge boulders, people hung ropes and offered worship. As time passed, people began to hang ropes between two poles. Theory has it that this transformed into the Torii archway that stands at shrine entrances. The Torii indicates the dwelling place of the deity. A foreign architect named Schmitz, on visiting Japan in the early 1900s, had this to say. There is an unexplainable sense of elegance and beauty in that shape. Even a foreigner like myself cannot help but be struck by its stately spiritual presence. Today's subject is the Torii. First, we focus on the silhouette of the Torii. Haruhiko Toyama researches shrines. He explains that all Toriis have a common structure. The Torii consists of two columns and two crossbars. It's a very simple structure, but despite this, the interesting feature is that every Torii is different. They may look the same, but they aren't. What distinguishes one torii from another are the crossbars. The crossbar on top is called kasagi, and below that is nuki. The various designs of these crossbars result in a myriad of unique torii's. Wow, so many different designs. Mm. Looking at them all lined up, I think I do see the difference. Torii's can be divided into two major categories. They all look the same, but different somehow. Take a close look. You'll see what distinguishes the ones on the left from those on the right. What? Oh, I know. Oh, I got it. The top crossbars. Some are straight, others are warped. Correct. Is the top crossbar straight or is it warped? That's where the secret lies. 
This tori has a straight crossbar on the top. There is no warp, and it's round. Toris have been around for ages. Originally, they were made of logs placed on top one another and had straight lines. For example, you see the shrine there. It is made in a style called Shinmei Zukuri. It is totally made from straight lines. This is a distinguishing feature of traditional Japanese architecture. That style is said to have influenced the design of toris like this one here. On this bronze bell-shaped vessel is a picture of a structure built over 2,000 years ago. Its roof has no warps, only straight lines. The roof is the archetype of Shinmei Zukuri. The Konoshima Shrine in Kyoto, the ancient capital, dates back roughly 1,400 years. The oratory's rectangular design is a typical Shinmei Zukuri. Worshipped here is a deity believed to be the center of the universe. Shrines wherein dwell esteemed high-ranking deities mostly feature Shinmei Zukuri oratories and toriis with straight crossbars on the top. The structure is a very simple combination of round logs. The top crossbar carries the names of deities worshipped there and the history of the shrine. Today's first mark of beauty is analyzing the roots of deities from the crossbar. Now, let's look into the roots of Toriis featuring warped crossbars. How did these warps come into use? The top crossbar has a slight warp at the ends. Take a look at the roof of the oratory. Its design is influenced by Buddhist architecture, which features warped roofs. And that influenced the crossbar on the torii to become warped. In the 6th century, Buddhism reaches Japan from the Asian continent. The Buddhist temples have designs in which the edges on its eaves are warped upward. This is to make the buildings appear elegant, like a bird spreading its wings. Influenced by such designs of Buddhist temples, warps began to be incorporated into Shinto shrines as well. Jonan Shrine is situated at the southern end of Kyoto, the ancient capital. Its torii is noted for its gentle, beautiful warps. Matching the crossbar with the warped roof of the oratory results in a display of harmonious beauty. Decorating the center of the torii are the sun, the moon, and a star. The decorations shine on day and night, symbolizing the shrine's power to protect the ancient capital. Shrines built after the diffusion of Buddhism in Japan feature torii's with warped crossbars. Some torii's have atop the warped crossbar a decoration resembling a headgear. 
This style of torii can often be seen at shrines where a deity called Sanno Gongan is worshipped. What does this decoration symbolize? This is Hiyoshi Shrine, the sanctuary of where the deity is worshipped. The architecture seen here has many warps and closely resembles Buddhist temples. A fusion of ancient Japanese deities with Buddhism began to take place over 1,000 years ago. Sano Gongen originated as the guardian deity of the Buddhist Endiak Temple. One theory is that the decoration atop the Torii represents Mount Hiei, where Endiaku Temple is located. If you ever have the chance to visit a Shinto shrine, take a look at the crossbar on the Torii. There you may discover the drama, the story of the deities worshipped at that shrine. Come to think of it, I rarely visit a shrine unless there is a festival with food stalls set up, and there's gaiety all around. I remember Keiko in grade school. How pretty she was in her summer festival kimono. Sorry, I got off the track there. Kusakari, you're really wasting an opportunity, just mindlessly passing under the Tori E like that. Well, excuse me for that as well. Sorry about that. The Torii has an ingenious device, a trick, so to speak, to give the shrine a stately presence. This is a shrine situated in Tokyo. It stands quietly in a residential district. The Torii standing over the approach to the oratory all vary in height. The first Torii is 8 meters high. The one next to it is 7.5 meters high. The last Torii is 7 meters high. As one goes further, the Torii's become shorter by 50 centimeters. This design is for the purpose of making the approach look longer than it really is. Viewed from the oratory, however, the approach does not seem that long. Shrines using this device can be found throughout Japan. This makes the approach look longer, making the sanctuary where the deity dwells to appear deeper inside. The Torii has various features, all at work to make the deity appear more majestic. Today's second mark of beauty is... Features to make the deity majestic. Now, let's take a look at an even more intricate device which utilizes the Torii. This is Tosho Shrine in Nikko, located roughly 140 kilometers from Tokyo. It is where the first Tokugawa Shogun is worshipped as a deity. The gorgeous decor glorifies the Shogun. The approach leads to the shrine. At the end of the approach are stone steps, above which stands the Torii. The stone steps have been arranged so as to make the Torii appear larger than it is. The width of the first step is 7 meters, whereas the top step has a width of 6.4.